This is the Pearl Charger, a product which recently got funded on Kickstarter and the crew behind it were brave enough to send me one of their engineering samples to see if it's any good. So the Pearl Charger is advertised to be the one charger to end them all, most notably boasting a dedicated 2.7 amp switching regulator for each USB port. That's a power rating of 13.5 watts per port and a combined total wattage of over 50 watts. It runs off of a DC barrel connector that lets you hook up either the included 60 watt AC adapter or any 7 to 17 volt DC supply of battery of your own choosing. Other features include a wide LED power meter, USB cord voltage drop compensation, status LEDs for each of the ports and per port overload protection, meaning that if one of your USB cords go bad or your device is short out, the other ports keep supply of their respective loads as if nothing's happened. The price, judging from the statements on the Kickstarter campaign, seems to place the Pearl with the included AC adapter at about $70, a hefty price for a USB charger. So we're here to find out if that's at all justified. Meet Big Bertha. Big Bertha is a constant current DC dummy load that was originally constructed for testing power supplies much, much bigger than the Pearl. She features four independent channels capable of dissipating 150 watts each, four wire voltage measurement, three very big fans, and as of a few days ago, a USB input board. In other words, she's just what we need to push the Pearl Charger to its limits and beyond. So I started testing by hooking the Pearl up and uh, tweaking Bertha's four channels to draw exactly as much power as the Pearl would deliver without cutting out, uh, 2780 milliamps per channel to be precise, and letting it cook overnight to see if it'll explode. Uh, it didn't, uh, but it did overload the included 60 watt AC adapter by about 10%, and the case reached a finger burning temperature of 80 degrees C on the bottom side, which was facing the table, and uh, well over 50 on the top. Uh, this was not much of a surprise, as the Pearl is primarily advertised as a charger and not a power supply, and uh, temperatures are much more reasonable when the charger is loaded down uh, at a more reasonable current of 2 amps or so. This was a torture test, and the Pearl passed by virtue of uh, just not exploding into a fiery mess. During this phase, I naturally ended up testing the overload protection as well, and uh, it works very well. A red LED lights up to show you that you're sitting just on the brink of tripping the protection circuit, and once tripped, the white LED for the overloaded port goes out, leaving only a red light to indicate the fault. A very intuitive system. I don't mind it at all. The watt meter on the Pearl might seem a bit gimmicky to some, but it's a feature I really appreciate as a technician. Uh, being able to quickly tell how much power is being delivered is really useful, although I'm a bit disappointed that the watt meter reports only the total power put out across all four channels. The button only toggles between the three brightness levels. To further mark down the watt meter, uh, the design of the casing makes it very difficult to read at an angle, since the light pipes from the PCB mounted LEDs making up the display don't mount flush to the outside of the case. Uh, reading the watt meter from an angle, uh, while possible, is uh, not something you're able to do at a glance. Uh, this is however easily remedied by just sticking a piece of white tape over the display or by filling it with uh, hot glue or something. A more serious issue arose when I ditched the included AC adapter for a variable power supply in order to test the charger's behaviour at different input voltages. While I'm happy to report that the charger will work just fine down to the advertised input voltage of about 7 volts, uh, below which the voltage will just uh, drop scaling with the input, it has no overcurrent protection on the input. So, since the Pearl is capable of drawing almost 70 watts from its power supply when all four outputs are fully loaded down, it'll draw 10 amps if you load it down fully at the minimum supply voltage of 7 volts. Uh, this is considerably more than the 7 amps that the DC barrel jack is rated to handle, and uh, more than one would intuitively expect the Pearl to draw. As a consequence of this, there's a real risk of a dangerous situation occurring if the Pearl is used to power heavy loads and something causes the input voltage to drop. Uh, such a scenario could be an overly long wire used to power the charger in a vehicle or a big RV or solar battery that's accidentally been run down without the user noticing. 
Still, I'm a nitpicking, uh, as such a situation can only occur if all four ports of the charger are fully loaded down continuously, which is an extremely rare use case since, well, what device is going to draw over 2.7 amps? For any normal charging application, a high load like that will never be maintained for long enough to cause the DC barrel jack or its wiring to overheat. Uh, I'm just pointing out that flaw because, well, it's my job to poke holes in nice things. So having survived my torture testing, I decided to put the pearl up against two competitors. Uh, the ubiquitous uh, three-port IKEA charger that will deliver up to 3.4 amps across all its ports, as well as a no-name piece of trash hockey puck that's uh, got too many ports for its own good. During these tests, the Pearl was powered from a lead post by so that we'd be actually testing the performance of the Pearl charger itself and not the included AC adapter. So, right off the bat, the Pearl has both of its competitors beat, boasting significantly lower noise on the output voltage. Uh, the same goes when we perform a load transient test. Going from no load to full load in an instant, the Pearl Mail raises the output voltage a smidgen, whereas the other two chargers put out some much less controlled waveforms, as they try to keep up with the sudden change in load. Uh, bonus points do go out of the pearl for the voltage drop compensation. Uh, by raising the voltage slightly at higher loads, more power can be delivered to the connected device. Uh, while the 0.15 volt increase isn't going to buy you much, it's still a very welcome feature that uh, all chargers should have. Transitioning from full load to no load uh, reveals a significant voltage spike coming out of a pearl, but this is not a problem since you only ever see this kind of load transient when disconnecting the charging lead from your device, and it doesn't affect the other ports. The other charges again perform considerably worse, and uh, their noise can be seen across all of their ports. In summary, performance-wise, the pearl is uh, simply the best. Hands down, uh, although it is a bit cheeky to compare a DC-DC converter to a couple of mains powered supplies. If we lift the lid on the pearl, we're greeted by the four completely separate DC-DC buck converters making up the four channels, as well as an Atmel microcontroller on a watt meter duty, complete with a programming port. Sadly, however, I've been informed that the microcontroller has no ability to affect the DC-DC converters in any way. Pearl are citing reliability concerns as a driving factor in this design decision. Overvoltage protection is provided by a TVSS diode straight across the input and reverse polarity protection is provided by a MOSFET, a much neater solution than the usual reverse diode you see in this kind of device. Uh, very functional and efficient, although the complete lack of an input fuse is definitely a markdown. You better have a fuse installed on your input lead if you're messing about with DIY power supplies, unless you fancy blowing a trace when things go wrong. Noteworthy is that the PCB is glued down to the bottom of the case, uh, which seems to be necessary for cooling, judging from the very high temperatures we saw on that side of the case. So if you take the board out for some reason, you probably want to make sure that it's glued back down with something uh, capable of conducting heat reasonably well. So. Is the Pearl Charger worth the premium it demands? Well, it really depends on whether or not you have a use for its unique features. I can definitely see the Pearl as an excellent alternative to dodgy car chargers, and its ability to run off of such a wide range of input voltages is definitely going to buy it some cred with the RC crowd. In my case, it's going to be living in my camera bag to give up with a bunch of adapters to hook it up to whatever's available. Uh, the Pearl is definitely not a replacement for your standard issue compact phone charger, and uh, really I can't see that much consumer appeal in it. It's too expensive and too bulky for your average smartphone, Joe. As a professional or speciality product, though, I think the Pearl has both a performance and the build quality to tick quite a few boxes. After all, it survived a night with Big Bertha. So, that's about it for the Pearl Charger. As always, make sure you enjoy yourself.